So this brings us to a very interesting part of this chapter, which is around rockets. So we all know that when a rocket spews out exhaust gases at high velocity, Newton's third law of motion dictates that the rocket should get propelled in the opposite direction. Because the law says that to every action, there should be an equal and opposite reaction. But how does the law of conservation of linear momentum apply to a system of masses, and in this case, the rocket and the gases, the exhaust gases, when the mass of the rocket is continuously reducing on account of fuel burning and converting into exhaust gases. So let us work around this and see how we get two important equations that help us understand the thrust and the velocity change a rocket experiences as the mass of the rocket changes on account of fuel burning and converting into exhaust gases. So let us say you have a rocket And let us say at time t, its velocity is v and its mass is m. And then after time delta t or at time t plus delta t, let's say the situation is like this. Its velocity has increased to v plus delta v, but its mass is reduced by delta m because it's got converted into exhaust gases and therefore the exhaust gases would have a mass delta m. So let's go ahead and show some exhaust gases coming out of the rocket. And let us say the velocity of these exhaust gases is u relative to the rocket. So it's important to remember that we are assuming that the velocity u is velocity relative to the rocket. So if the law of conservation of linear momentum is to hold, assuming it's in outer space and there are no external forces acting on the system, we can say that the momentum before should equal to the momentum after time delta t. So let's put this equation to the test and we can say that the momentum at time t is nothing but m into v and this should equal to the momentum of the rocket at time t plus delta t which is m minus delta m is the mass of the rocket into its velocity which is v plus delta v and we'll go ahead and add the momentum of the exhaust gases as well but before we do that we must remember that u is relative velocity of the exhaust gases relative to the rocket but we've assumed that the velocity v of the rocket is to an observer on earth or the inertial frame is the earth so the velocity of the exhaust gases to an observer on earth would be v minus u. So the momentum of the exhaust gases would be delta m into v minus u. So let's go ahead and simplify this equation a little more. What we have on the left hand side is mv and on the right hand side we get mv plus m delta v minus delta m v minus delta m delta v plus delta m v minus delta m u and we can quickly see that a lot of terms which are getting cancelled off so let's go ahead and do that m v cancels delta m v cancels and you can see that delta m into delta v would be a very small term so this we can almost ignore and finally what we get is that m delta v is equal to u delta m. And this is an important equation because if we divide both sides by delta t, what we get is m delta v upon delta t is equal to u delta m upon delta t. And if we apply differential here, that is assume delta v, delta t, and delta m to be infinitesimally small, what you get is m dv upon dt is equal to u minus dm upon dt. Now, the question you might be asking is, why should we take minus dm? So the answer to this is that if the mass of the rocket at time t was m, and the mass of the rocket at time t plus delta t 
is equal to or let us say we take dt instead of delta t is equal to m minus delta m because the mass is reducing you got to remember the fuel is burning so the mass of the rocket is reducing and then if you take m t plus delta t minus mass at time t what you get is m minus dm minus m and what you get is minus dm so you got to remember when you're converting this into differential form your delta m converts into minus dm so therefore this simplifies into m into a because dv upon dt is nothing but the acceleration of the rocket is equal to minus u dm upon dt so this is our first rocket equation which says that the mass into acceleration of the rocket or we can call this as a thrust is equal to minus the relative velocity of the exhaust gases into the rate of change of mass of the rocket so the second equation can also be derived from this relationship where we have m delta v is equal to u delta m and if we convert this into a differential form what you have is m dv is equal to minus u dm and we've taken minus for the reasons we've just discussed earlier and if we apply limits for velocity changing from v initial to v final and the mass changing from mass initial to mass final and bring m to this side what we have is velocity once again we'll use the integral form dv is equal to minus u into integral of mass initial to mass final 1 upon m dm and if you simplify this what you get is v final velocity of the rocket minus v initial is equal to minus u times ln m as the limits change from m initial to m final and the relationship we get is v final minus v initial is equal to minus u ln of m final upon m initial.